All right, so before I work on these practice uh, basic derivative problems, I'm going to remind you of a few outer rules. So if we have a number, just a constant number, um, in the denominator or something, so we said like x over any number, we can rewrite that by pulling the number out front. So you can say 1 over the number times x. So if the number is in the denominator, you can pull it out front. Now if we have the numbers on top and the variable is on bottom, then the way you rewrite that before taking the derivative is you have to pull the x to the top. So it becomes x to the negative 1. So if there's a number on bottom, you can always pull it out front. But if it's an x or a variable of any sort on bottom, you have to pull it up to the top. And then you could have a mixture of the two. If we have some number up here and a number down here, okay, then we'd just pull both of those numbers out. Let me give you an actual example, like y equals 3 over 5x cubed, for instance. We would want to rewrite this as 3 fifths times, oops, times 1 over x cubed. And then we could bring that x to the top. So we could say 3 fifths times x to the negative 3. Then we would be able to take its derivative. So the main thing to remember, if there's a number on the denominator, pull it out front, even if there's an x down there too. You pull the number out front, like we did here, but then you take the x to the top. You never take numbers to the top. All right. So we're going to find the derivatives of the following function. Simplify completely with no negative exponents. Part A here, I don't have to rewrite it at all. So I'll just go ahead and take the derivative. And we get the derivative is going to be 11 times 2 is 22x to the 11 minus 1 is 10. Plus the derivative of 4x is 4 and the derivative of negative 6 is 0. So that is our answer. Part B. Only we we'd want to rewrite this one is because of that square root there. So we'll have 5x to the 4th minus 4x to the 1 half plus 9x minus 12. All right, now we can take the derivative. And we would have 4 times 5 is 20x to the 3rd. Half times 4 is minus 2x to the 1 half minus 1 is negative half plus the derivative of 9x is 9, and the derivative of negative 12 is 0. Then we'd want to rewrite this one more time because we have a negative exponent there, so we'll have to take the x to the bottom. All right, now remember numbers never move up or down. They just stay where they are or move out front. So we have 20x cubed minus, the two will stay on top, but the x will need to move down and become to the positive half power plus 9. All right, so then part C, I'm going to rewrite it. So we have a number on top and an x on bottom. So that means you pull the x to the top and make it to the negative 1. On the second term here, we have a number on the bottom. So we're going to pull the number out front. Okay. So I rewrote it. Now I'm going to take the derivative. So taking the derivative, derivative would be negative 1 times 3 is negative 3x to the negative 2, because I did negative 1 minus 1, plus the derivative of 1 third x is 1 third. Rewriting this without a negative exponent, we would get negative 3 over x squared plus 1 third. Okay. Part D, definitely going to rewrite. 
Um, so if there's an x in the bottom, I'm going to pull it to the top. So I'm going to have 8x to the negative 2. Then for this middle term, we have a number in the bottom. So if there's a number in the bottom, we just pull that out front. So I'll have 1 fourth and then x squared. And then for the third term, I'm going to pull the numbers out front. So 6 fifths out front, and that leaves me with 1 over x. And then I want to take that x to the top. So I'm just going to erase that and write x to the negative 1. Now I'll be able to take the derivative. And I'll have negative 2 times 8 is negative 16x to the negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. 2 times 1 fourth is negative half. x to the 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 6 fifths is negative 6 fifths x to the negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. And then I want to rewrite this because the first and last term both have negative exponents. And so I'll have negative 16 over x cubed minus half x minus 6 over, the 5 is already down there, so I'll just put the x squared with it. All right, so part E, I'm going to rewrite this. This is really 12 over x to the 3 fourths. Then I can pull that to the top and make it 12x to the negative 3 fourths. So now I can take the derivative. Taking the derivative, I'd get negative 3 fourths times 12. So negative 3 fourths times 12, I'm going to come off to the side over here. Negative 3 fourths times 12 is going to give me negative 36 over 4, which is negative 9 x to the negative 3 fourths minus 1. So negative 3 fourths minus 1 is the same thing as negative 3 fourths minus 4 fourths, which is negative 7 fourths. And then I just want to rewrite my answer and get rid of my negative exponent. So that would be negative 9 over x to the 7 fourths. Okay, part F, I'm definitely going to rewrite this. So the first term I have my variable in the denominator, so it can come up to the top and become 4y to the negative 5. Next term I have a number in the denominator, so it's going to come out front. And this last one, it's 8 over y to the half. So that's a variable, so I'm going to bring it up to the top, and it'll be 8y to the negative half. All right, then taking the derivative of this, I'll have negative 5 times 4 is negative 20y to the negative 6, plus 6 times half is 3y to the fifth, negative half times negative eight is positive four y to the negative three halves, because you do negative half minus one. Then I'll have to rewrite this because I have two negative exponents, and so I'll have negative 20 over y to the 6 plus 3y to the 5th plus 4 over y to the 3 halves. All right, part g, we don't need to rewrite it, so we're going to do 14 or 4 sevenths times 14. I'm even going to use a calculator on that one. Oops. All 
All right, so that's 4 sevenths times 14 is 8. All right, so that's 8. And then if you needed to, you could do 4 sevenths minus 1 and math frac, and that'll leave us to the negative 3 sevenths. So this gave me 8x to the negative 3 sevenths. Here I'll have negative 5 thirds times negative 3 is going to be positive 5x to the negative 8 thirds. Rewriting this to get rid of my negative exponents, I would have 8 over x to the 3 sevenths plus 5 over x to the 8 thirds. All right. And then part H, I'm going to rewrite. This is going to be x to the 2 thirds plus 5 pi. Taking the derivative, I'd have 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third, and the derivative of 5 pi is 0. So rewriting my answer such that it doesn't have a negative exponent, we'll have 2 over 3 x to the 1 third. All right, so number two says find all x values on the graph of f of x equals blah, 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 where the slope of the tangent line is six. So slope of the tangent line is code word for derivative. So we're looking for where the derivative equals six. So I'm gonna find the derivative first, and I get three times two thirds is two x squared minus two times seven is 14 x to the one. Derivative of negative 54 x is negative 54, and the derivative of eight is zero. So that's my derivative, and I wanna set it equal to six. Before you start solving this, you need to have it all equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract six from both sides, and I get two x squared minus 14 x minus 60 equals zero. All right, I can take a two out of everything and it leaves me with x squared minus seven x minus 30 equals zero. I'm gonna come up here. So factoring, x squared is gonna be x and x. And then I need two numbers that'll multiply to give me negative 30, but add to give me negative seven. So that's gonna be negative 10 and positive three. So then I have this product equal to zero. That means either two equals zero, but it doesn't, or x minus 10 equals zero, so x equals 10 or x plus three equals zero, so x equals negative three. So there are g of x equal blah, blah, blah. Find where the slope of the tangent line is horizontal. So slope of the tangent line is fancy talk for derivative. And we wanna know where the derivative is horizontal, so where the derivative is has a slope of zero. So I'm gonna take the derivative. Four times half is two x to the third plus 3x squared minus 20x to the 1 plus 0 equals 0. Before I factor, I can take an x out of everything. It leaves me with 2x squared plus 3x minus 20. Factoring now, factors of 2x squared would be 2x and x. Um, factors of 20, 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. We can't say what multiplies to give you 20 and adds to give you 3 because we've got that 2 in front there. So I'm just going to do trial and error here. I'm just going to start with my last two numbers. 
So if I put a four and a five in, here's a hint. Anytime there you have a multiple, like four is a multiple of two, it's not gonna go in the same parentheses. So I'm gonna swap those a second. And then I'm gonna foil this out just to see if I can possibly get it to make three in the middle. So FOIL means first terms, 2x squared, outside would be 8x, inside is 5x, and last is 20. So I'm focused on these. I can turn this into a positive 3 if I make the 8 positive and the 5 negative. So the 2 that I multiply together to give me 8, I need that one to be positive. And the two numbers I multiplied together to give me 5, which are these inside numbers, I need that one to be negative. Alright, so then that equals 0. So I have this product equal to 0. That means either x equals 0, or 2x minus 5 equals 0, or x plus 4 equals 0. So I have either x equals 0, here, if I add the 5 over, I get 2x equals 5, so x equals 5 halves, and x equals negative 4. So this happens in three places.